She was known as the goddess with many names. The goddess of war, mistress of dread or even the protectress of the divine order, just to name a few, were some titles given to the one and the only fearsome goddess Sekhmet whose name is said to signify the one who is mighty or powerful in ancient Egyptian language. This was an eminently suitable name given to the most destructive female divinity, who was nonetheless the instrument of divine retribution. Highly revered by the ancient Egyptians, the goddess Sekhmet was an entity associated with war, medicine, fire and retribution. She was a solar deity frequently envisioned as a woman with the head of a fierce lioness surmounted by a solar disk, symbolizing her association with the sun and a ureus which linked her to Kemetic kingship and her relationship with the goddess Wajet. And just like many other Egyptian divinities, Sekhmet had two contradictory sides to her complex personality. As the lion-headed goddess, this remarkable deity was destructive and dangerous in nature, perfectly conforming to her name but she was also known to have had a healing and protective role. The goddess Sekhmet was more involved in protecting the heir to the throne, defending the pharaohs against their enemies and spearheaded their wars. This aspect of her personality was particularly popular among many Egyptian pharaohs who considered the goddess as a powerful and military patroness, symbol of their own strength in every single battles they fought. She was the spirit leading their wars and always present with their armies just like the scorching winds of a desert, which were often likened to her breath. She was also said to be the one who wields the knife on the night of great battle between the forces of order and chaos, while the pyramid text named the deity as a parent watching over the pharaoh after his rebirth in the celestial afterlife. In the city of Memphis, she was worshipped as the consort of Ptah and the mother of both Nefertum and the lion-headed god Mihos, who were solar divinities associated with perfume and war respectively. This is quite a resemblance with whom many considered to be her more gentle sister, the cat-headed goddess, whom just like Sekhmet has the same associations with these divinities. The symbol of the goddess Sekhmet was an aegis shown as a broad collar type necklace resembling a shield and topped with the head of a lioness. But considering the fact that she has similarities with the cat-headed goddess that it was sometimes hard to distinguish between them both, the aegis later became a symbol equally associated with Bastet, who is frequently cited as her balancing opposite and the embodiment of maternal and benign forces in contrast to the goddess Sekhmet who personified death and destruction. However they both had similar roles in Lower and Upper Egypt and were perceived as divine instruments of the Sun God. Beside being the daughter of the Sun Ra, Sekhmet was one of the most important manifestations of the Eye of Ra, alongside the goddesses Mut, Bast and Hather, whom altogether were the fiercest weapons against the perils of humanity. Death was even believed to have came into the world for the first time when the Eye of Ra was sent down as Sekhmet to punish the rebellious human race. There are probably a myriad of theories of how Sekhmet was born, and the one retaining the most attention is her coming into existence when the Eye of the Sun was sent forth to destroy humanity. According to one myth, when humanity turned their back to the Sun Ra, he sent his eye in the form of the goddess Hather to exact vengeance upon them. Carrying out her mission, the peaceful Hather transformed into the lion-headed goddess who laid waste upon humankind in an ecstasy of slaughter. Earning the epithet Lady of Jubilation, she who dances on blood nearly destroyed humanity when Ra realized that his daughter's thirst for blood has to be satiated, otherwise humanity would not survive this insanity. The sun god outwitted the goddess into drinking some red beverage to quench her thirst for blood, and thus saving humanity from a thorough extermination. After mistaking the reddish drink for blood, she became so drunk that she gave up the slaughter and returned peacefully to Ra. But before returning to her father, the eye of Ra had to be pacified with dance, music and drunkenness. Therefore, Many would believe that the goddess Sekhmet was a dangerous weapon created from the fiery eye of the sun god and the purpose of this creation was only one. The annihilation of whoever disobey her father. In a version following the previous story, 
Sekhmet grew angered to have been deceived by her father and left Egypt, which diminished the power of the sun, consequently threatening the safety of the world. She was later persuaded by the god Toth to return and restore the sun to its full glory. Her violence which was necessary to placate to her nature made her a goddess of disease, and earned the epithet Lady of the Plague whose arrows were invisible deliverers of illness and death. Sekhmet was the most dreaded among archer divinities in the Egyptian pantheon, her arrows came to be personified as the seven messengers who inflicted plague and destruction on humanity and only medical scriptures gave directions on how to repel her dreadful messengers. To the people of Kemet, she was the fiercest divinity who could turn lands into deserts. And as such, she seems to have embodied the negative qualities of the sun's heat that could lead to sunstroke, drought and famine. Therefore, as the controller of disease and healing, Sekhmet had the power to ward off sickness and became a patron goddess of physicians. So from the old kingdom onward, priests of her temple made use of medicine and were said to have been specialist in healing magic. Sekhmet was a fierce lion-headed goddess of ancient Egypt, she could be a raging warrior but was also known as the patron deity of the Bonesetters Guild of Physicians. She was called upon by queens, priests, and healers of all kind because her power and strength were needed everywhere. And starting from the New Kingdom, she was the incomparable one whose personality was often linked with other deities or mainly thought to have been the aggressive aspect of greater goddesses, such as Hathor, the Egyptian goddess of love, music and drunkenness. Then she became closely related to Mut, the great mother and queen of gods, and finally with Isis. The goddess Sekhmet had to be propitiated during the dangerous transition to the new year when infectious diseases were particularly dangerous. Throughout this annual festival of intoxication as one would call it, the ancient Egyptians would dance and played music to soothe her violence while drinking great loads of wine as a ritual to imitate the extreme drunkenness that ended her fury when she almost destroyed humanity. The rite of appeasing the deity was performed by her priest to battle diseases and epidemics. But at the same time she was greatly feared because she could equally cause harm, for her seven messengers were believed to bring trouble and bad fortune upon men. So small amulets were used for protection against her wrath, and many rituals and spells were used to transform the raging solar lioness into a benevolent goddess. Although her main site of worship was located in the city of Memphis, she also had many temples in other locations across the Black Land. Some accounts say that Amenhotep III erected 730 impressive statues depicting the powerful deity in his mortuary temple in western Thebes. And it is said that for this amount of effigies representing the fierce divinity, a pair was dedicated for each day of the year among which there would be one seated and another one standing with a papyrus scepter possibly to pacify her, or to invoke her protection at the most unstable times of the day which were believed to be during sunrise and sunset for the ancient Egyptians. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if this was to your liking, do me a favor by leaving it a like, subscribe and do not forget to leave me a word in the comment section down below. And as always, stay curious.